Hey friends, Cloudbart here. Time for another one minute identity and access management lesson. Today I was thinking about the impact of creating composite permission sets by using policies attached to both resources and identities and maybe even to the organizations and the accounts themselves. Remembering that in the end, identity and access management evaluates your permissions holistically. This means that it's not processed in an ordered mode, but instead looks at all of the different players that might affect the call that you're trying to make, including the resources and of course the identity. So for example, let's say that I was trying to interact with an S3 bucket. Well, an S3 bucket is something that can have a resource-based policy attached to it. This would be like an S3 um, bucket policy that we could attach. And of course, just like anything else, we can grant privileges using that identity and access management policy attached to the resource. A great example of this would be to think about what is the common permission that everything in that bucket is always going to need. For example, I often see people set this to use some sort of an encryption enforcement at the actual bucket level itself. Not necessarily granting specific actions here, but rather thinking about the quality or some of the durability expectations that we have with whatever's gonna live in the bucket. And then later on with your identity policy, you might choose to grant the actual actions that you wanna allow people to perform. Keeping in mind that now you're seeing that composite effect that I was talking about earlier on. We're looking at the combined permissions of the resource policy combined with the permissions of the identity policy. Keeping in mind that it's okay for the permissions to overlap if they're allow statements. Two different allows don't cause a problem, but therein is the real big crux of it. If there is a deny in either of these policies, it can easily override any of the other allows that might've been granted in the other policies, either on the resource or on the identity side. And so hopefully you can see how using these different combinations together are gonna to be an important trick for us as solutions architects, designers, developers, and engineers to get the permissions that we're looking for. For more information, I encourage you to take a look online, AWS IAM permissions evaluation. Therein you'll find some documentation that takes you over to the IAM docs themselves. And then you can scroll down in, they actually talk a little bit about the notion of creating these composite policies like I was referring to, where we're combining multiple different permission sets across resources, identities, and even further on down, you can see them talking about using organizations and permissions boundaries, all of which we'll be getting into in future lessons. See you next time.